Hey guys, it's Tata's Tuesday, one of the off weeks between Gamer's Guides to Feminism. And today I'm talking about this interesting article I discovered through the World Economic Forum Twitter feed about math anxiety and the differences in how it manifests in boys and girls. And this is a bit of a deep dive in that one study sort of leads to another study and it leads to another study. This has been something they've been observing for quite a few years now, trying to figure out why girls have such an increased level of anxiety when it comes to math. And this is separated from both skill, raw skill, whether girls are objectively good at math or less good at math than boys. They found that performance wise, there's no difference. Um, test anxiety is factored out in these studies because test anxiety does have a profound effect. Um, but they wanted to see specifically about math, not the process of being tested math, or as it says here, maths, because this is British. Um, but what they found in this, in this latest article is quite interesting in that even in countries with more gender parity, with more gender equality, girls still have significantly more negative emotions surrounding mathematics than boys do. And the question is, why? Basically what this article says is, we don't really know. Um, we can guess at certain things. Um, the interesting thing is that um, parents, even, even if the mothers are scientists, it doesn't take down the anxiety. Um, and that dif gender differences in anxiety are more than twice, as they say, twice the magnitude of gender differences in mathematics performance. That's what I was saying. Um, what's interesting is, is also that in developed countries, uh, overall anxiety for boys and girls was lower regarding math, but the reduction in anxiety was greater for boys than for girls. And that's what this chart here shows that the, as you can see, as, as things become more gender equal, then the um, amount of anxiety drops significantly more for boys than it does for girls. Uh, this is the, uh, the chart on the left that's measuring anxiety. The other one is measuring um, anxiety versus mathematics performance. Um, and it's, I mean, you can sort of see the, the lines are a tad misleading because you can see the dots are all over the place. Um, but um, this, these, these studies are curious and they're interesting, but they're also kind of disturbing because as the article said, we're still flailing around in the dark when it comes to attracting more women to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields, otherwise known as STEM fields. And this additional anxiety is an extra bit of the picture, um, you know, in, because of course, why would someone want to go into a job that has, you know, high levels of anxiety? Um, I guess some people thrive off stress, but a lot of people don't. And so, you know, like I said, this is an additional picture, but um, there, there are other earlier studies that looked at uh, boys and girls and test anxiety versus math anxiety. Um, the interesting thing is that the levels of mathematics and related anxiety are also tied to decreased performance in girls. So the more stressed out girls get, the worse they do. Um, the, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, there was 
no difference in overall mathematical performance, even though girls were more affected by the stress. So this is, you know, interesting. But the, the question that remains is why does math stress out girls so much more than boys? And this is something we need to figure out because obviously, you know, stress is going to keep women out of fields involving math. And this is interesting for me because there was one point um, from about grade three to grade six or seven where I had severe math anxiety. And it, for me, there was a very specific reason. For me, it was because um, longtime listeners of the channel know that I went through a process, an academic process called acceleration. I was such a nerd <laughs> as a kid that they had me write the, the gifted test in grade one but the gifted only started in grade three. So they, the process is called acceleration where they not only put you into gifted, but they skip you past grade two. So grade two is the year that uh, kids get fundamentals, most notably in uh, multiplication and division tables. So I got into grade three and we were doing drills. And it was just plunked down in front of us, these, these tables. We, it was timed, you know, and, and it would just be random questions and you had to fill out as many as you possibly could. Well, I had never been exposed to multiplication or division in a school setting before, ever before this. And it completely freaked me out, that feeling of, you know, not only being in a class with kids who are an entire year older than me, which when you're that age is a big deal. You know, you're talking about the difference between um, seven years old and eight years old, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it, it definitely makes you feel small. And then this, um, you know, the skill I, I just didn't have was I was expected to know. And it, because it was gifted, they weren't exactly especially interested in helping kids who were having difficulties, even though they knew I was in a unique situation. I was the only kid in the class that had actually skipped grade two. It's very rare they have kids skip grades now for the same reason that it's very rare that they'll fail a kid. They believe in age appropriate placement in this province. And so I uh, was sort of on my own. Uh, which meant I was doing math drills with my father, which in hindsight, if it was a choice between that and a root canal, I absolutely would have chosen the root canal and felt like I dodged a major bullet. It was horrible. And so not only did that completely freak me out beyond all reason for quite a few years, um, but it, and it, it wasn't until I got into... Um, uh, middle school. I got out of the gifted after grade four because I just I hated it for many reasons, and that's a digression. But I got back into regular school, and so you know I was able to. <laughs> it's not exactly catch up, but I was able to sort of have more time to get in those skills deficits. The game Number Munchers really helped. That's part of the reason I am so big about computers in the classroom because just playing a game reduces that level of anxiety because what I found out is that you know times tables and divisions tables they're just um, they're just repetition they're doing it over and over and over again so they embed and my attitude is give kids a video game because then you can run those drills to their heart's content and it's gamified it reduces the stress it takes the tension off that's how I ended up learning to an extent but then even as I got into high school, even when I was in enriched math in high school, I always had this idea that I was bad at math because math stressed me out. I was getting, I was getting straight A's in math. Uh, I got a 78% once and that was because there, you know, one of my pets died before a test and the, my, my uh, math teacher said, you should have told me. 
Uh, but that was one midterm. The final mark came up. I got straight A's in math all, all through school, but I still had this perception that I wasn't good at math. Certainly not, um, certainly not as good as I was in other things. And some people could say, you know, that's because you can't, you know, BS math. There's a right answer, a wrong answer. And it's like, no, I, I enjoyed the problem solving elements of math. Uh, I really enjoyed algebra. But whenever there were those, you know, arithmetic calculations, it was this block. And I wonder if to a lesser degree this isn't happening to other kids. If the way math is taught or, or arithmetic is taught in schools is causing an unnecessary level of anxiety. And I personally think video games are the solution to this, as I said. Uh, if math homework was a, a series of games tied to curriculum, to, to, you know, grade by grade curriculum, the kids could work through, God, that, that would have been so much better than these, you know, painful, frustrating, scary cheats of numbers that just stare back at you like a brick wall. And yes, I did overcome it. Yes, I kept up with uh, math. I took calculus, you know, I did all the things, but it really did change my perception of my own skill. And I can't help but wonder whether I would have um, gone into something a little bit more sort of hard science driven as opposed to, um, you know, I do a lot of research, but you know, I, I'm an entertainer and a host by trade. It might not have changed anything, but I wonder, you know, I wonder if, if I had had better early experiences, would it have been um, a, a different story for me? And this is, I've talked to educators about this and it, it's really a catch-22 for them because to me, I was a sort of kid where just give me the work. And, and don't test me on it right away. Give me a chance to, to get good, to be able to practice and actually learn it before you test me. Now, apparently I'm an anomaly in that way because teachers I've known said, you know, if kids find out they're not being marked on something, they just don't do it. And they want, you know, apparently kids in school now from the educators I know, they want to mark for everything or they don't do the work. And I'm like, that's silly as far as I'm concerned, because to me, I wanted to learn. You know, I, I wanted to be good at math. I wanted to be good at science. I, I liked these things. Um, but I wanted to actually learn for the sake of learning. I didn't want the constant testing because my attitude was, if you're testing me on something I don't know yet, then you're not testing what I've been taught you're testing what I already know. And what's the point of paying to take a course, paying hundreds of dollars to take a single course if you already know it? So this is of particular interest to me and this is something I'm going to continue to follow just on a, on a level of personal curiosity because I don't believe that women are just naturally more stressed out about mathematics than, than men are. That doesn't make any sense you know, lizard brain territory, counting, everybody needs to count. Um, everybody knows, needs to know how to do, you know, basic math. It's something in the social cues. I, I am sure of this that is causing greater anxiety for, uh, for girls than boys. And they, they say it, it could even be that parents in more developed countries place a stronger emphasis on the mathematic abilities of sons as opposed to their daughters, which is crazy. The even families that have, you know, women, mom working in sciences might have that bias. Um, and they, you know, it does actually, it says, it says they did have that bias. What it says here, the study also analyzed the possible role of parental views on the value and importance of mathematics for their daughters and sons. Perhaps surprisingly, 
Parents in more developed countries placed a stronger emphasis on the math ability of their sons than their daughters, despite the fact that more developed countries have larger portions of mothers working in STEM fields. Now, I don't know if that perhaps surprisingly, um, I guess it's not a question, because it's like perhaps surprisingly, parents in more developed countries place a stronger emphasis on the math ability, or perhaps surprisingly, parents in more developed countries, this is a messed up sentence. <laughs> Um, but what I think they're saying is that parents in more developed countries care more about the math ability of boys than girls. I guess that's it right there. But, you know, you can see that, um, you know, gender, just gender equality on paper, the last paragraph here, um, g the Equality of opportunity is not enough as a sole factor in getting more girls into subjects like computer science. Um, it says, it's fair to say that nobody knows what will actually attract more girls into these subjects. Uh, policies and programs to change the gender balance in non-organic STEM, su STEM subjects have just not worked. And I think, okay, great. We know they haven't worked. So let's stop doing what we've done up until this point and try something different because of that statistic the girls are actually no better or worse than math than boys even though they think they are this is an attitudinal shift that has to happen um and uh there's a lot of theories about why i mean if you watch my feminine mystique video it's that whole sex directed education that girls brains are being distracted by specific things that they have to worry about that boys don't but nobody really has the answers so this is an area where more research can be done. If I'm lucky, I'll be able to be part of this, sort of figuring this out, um, because I really like computers and I really like science and I just never had the sense of myself that I was good enough at any of it to you know, train formally to make a living in it. Surprise, surprise, when you, you know, see my stuff about game design, I obviously know it, but is that art or is that science? It's both. And that's probably, I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe these things need to be presented as much as stuff that's an art because, hello mama, um, knowing, knowing how to set the right questions to get the right data is an art as much of a science. And Momo was telling me to wrap it up, that this is, this is enough for today. He's stepping on the microphone, so I might be muffled now. So we will be back with another Gamer's Guide to Feminism on next Tuesday. And this will be really muffled because Momo just sat on the mic. Thanks, Momo.